I'm Srinivas Kathavati. I'm the senior manager in uh, Cisco with uh, Server Access Virtualization Business Unit. Um, I'll be presenting today the Cisco's uh, innovation into cloud computing or virtualization concepts. So I'm going to be focusing more on the C-series rack servers that has been coming out of uh, here in India, fully developed uh, software stack for this particular product. Uh, though this product kind of goes over uh, different layers of networking and storage, my focus will be more on the rack servers because uh, that's where my specialization is and that's what I drive at Cisco. But however, I'll try to cover some of your questions that you might have in terms of uh, networking uh, rack servers to Cisco. So what I'm trying to put together here is uh, uh, what challenges we have today in terms of uh, data center infrastructure, what it demands. Uh, the list is definitely much bigger than this, but what I have captured here is a state-of-the-art hardware architecture, software architecture, open-ended, highly scalable, and also running multiple operating systems uh, in virtual manage, virtual machine mode. Also, we are looking at uh, integrated compute, node, network, and storage uh, under a unified management solution. So it's ease of use for integrating all these pieces and man managing and monitoring and control as well. So the last part is virtualization for easy data migration backup under multiple OS um, is what I want to focus with this presentation today. So Cisco's uh, offering to uh, IT delivery model. Uh, this is just a, uh, a high level architecture I have brought here today. Uh, different applications running on different virtual machines, which goes on top of the cloud infrastructure. And we provide uh, various cloud infrastructure uh, backbone. Uh, physical servers, storage, uh, and then as well as um, uh, the other networking infrastructure related to this. So UCSC series uh, rack server value proposition, what I'm putting together here is a key differentiation that this rack server brings into the marketplace compared to our competition. Uh, it has a standard baseline comprehensive x86 rack server portfolio two socket four socket I'm going to focus more on two sockets today and it has a very large primary memory uh, as of today we go up to 768 gigabyte of memory and we have technology to take it to three times that space so we could potentially take it to two terabyte of just a primary memory alone on a two, two socket rack server we also have large-scale uh, secondary storage uh, you know with uh, onboard uh, SATA or SAS controller that can take your memory, secondary memory to about uh, 24 terabyte or as hardware uh, next generation hard drives are available we could take it up to 48 terabyte as well. So some of these uh, helps, key functions of these proposition helps in uh, uh, virtualization concepts basically that's where I'm leading this uh, presentation to. Cisco Virtual NIC interface is the unique uh, uh, high performance interface card is a PCI adapter card or mezzanine card that basically gives you uh, PCI virtualized uh, PCI interfaces up to 128 to 256 PCI ports um, from the host side and then gives you a ba over the bandwidth of up to 80 gigabits per second. It also all of this hardware architecture um, I will get you into more slides of that in the block diagram but is all managed through uh, what's called support for UCS Manager. So UCS Manager is a GUI based, uh, it's an embedded application sitting, sitting on one of the Cisco switch, which basically man monitors and manages all of the uh, underlying components. So going more deep into uh, my part of the whole uh, presentation here, or the solution to cloud computing, which is Cisco UCS C-Series rack servers, we are offering next generation data center um, and rack server platforms uh, which are geared to uh, interface with networking storage as well and it's optimized for virtual environment It's designed with open industry standards technology so both hardware and software is pretty open-ended and scalable to whatever extent it integrates with very low latency switch uh, cisco proprietary switch 
which goes to about 40 gig uh, on channel and then over a standard x86 server architecture. It's highly scalable, as I said, multi-chassis platform with all resources participate in a unified management domain. So the two key uh, deployment modes that I have for these uh, rack servers, there are eight of these flavors coming out. Uh, four are just about announced. Uh, two are announced and then uh, two more in just another two months time. And we will have about eight SKUs of these rack servers. They all can be deployed in two unique modes. Uh, one is a standard configuration standalone configuration mode like any other rack server. Also, we have a unique Cisco proprietary uh, virtualized uh, and, and for the geared for virtualized, uh, virtualized uh, deployments. That's unique UCSM C-series integrated configuration mode. So basically the advantages of uh, in a large scale primary memory, the large scale secondary memory that we have, and then the network interface card that we have on board and the uh, secondary storage as well, storage arrays, which will help in uh, providing virtualized uh, concepts. So this is the key innovation that's coming out of uh, Cisco Bangalore office, and the entire software stack is developed here in India for this particular product. So uh, I just want to a little bit take you, walk you through some of the technology innovations that we have accomplished uh, in terms of memory expansion. Currently, uh, the current architecture takes you to about 100 uh, about um, 144 gigabytes on a previous generation uh, Intel platform and the next generation ROMLI coming out is 768 gigabyte of uh, expansion memory uh, so that's a standard this particular slide talking about how Intel uh, puts together its architecture in terms of memory scaling but what Cisco has put together is another innovation on top of this which is uh, giving you uh, ASIC, which is a memory extender, which gives you a capability to expand your memory at wire speed up to, f up to about three to four times. So if I have a memory of uh, today's, uh, as I said, today's Romley servers come out with 768 gigabyte of memory, uh, we could have this memory extended technology applied and take the memory to about two terabytes. So this will definitely help in, uh, in, in virtualization concepts, that's my focus, and then the cloud computing infrastructure as well. So as I was saying, a little bit summary to the extended technology here, uh, virtualization software runs on multiple operating system instances demanding large amount of memory um, because of the virtualization concepts and the, uh, the virtual machine. IT organizations are forced to upgrade to larger and expensive four socket servers uh, this is mainly if, uh, if, the op if the requirement is to go with a higher memory, they have an option to only go with a four socket server, which gives you extended memory capability. But with Cisco, we could provide this on a two socket server extended memory technology. So that's, this is a patent technology from uh, Cisco, allows CPU to access more industry standard memory uh, on a two socket server. So that's uh, the key differentiation I want to highlight here. Besides that, any other non-virtualized application which demands a uh, huge memory uh, application to run on uh, primary memory is also supported uh, through this technology. So like application like database management systems as well as mobile uh, modeling and simulation software can take advantage of the onboard memory and run the application completely out of the cache. So the second part of the uh, key innovation into the cloud computing uh, is the Cisco's WIC for C-Series. This is the virtual um, the concept I was talking about, the PCI standard uh, virtual interface card, which basically gives you uh, 128 PCI devices as enumerated at the host side. And on the uh, network side, it gives you bandwidth up to about 80 gigabytes, 80 gigabits per second uh, on the network side. So when I have these uh, uh, rack servers and pieces together, how I put together uh, in an architecture for a cloud infrastructure or a, a virtual, uh, virtual machine, virtual infrastructure, uh, we have the rack server, as I was just talking about, all of the highlight okay, um, is, is talked about here. I talked pretty much about this one here. 
and we also have uh, blades configuration in, throughout Cisco's uh, US office which provides the blades solution and we could integrate blade and rack together as a compute node under UCSM. So this uh, uh, the switches which gives you fabric interconnect gives you a connection into both your rack servers as well as blade servers integrated together and you could extend your compute node across these two types of compute blades and racks. So this architecture basically um, and it gives you a, an integrated solution of compute network and storage solution. So some of the use cases I have captured here today uh, is how we deploy our rack servers in data centers, cloud computing, uh, as well as uh, standalone applications. So some of the benchmark results we have just announced for the C-Series rack servers. Uh, these are the Intel standard uh, benchmarks that the Plaid product has been run through. Uh, looking at the floating point numbers here, these three are floating point number benchmarks where Cisco's product M3 server came out first. And then also we have uh, VMware, what, how, how well the machine is geared for virtual uh, management, VM uh, specifications, Java applications, as well as we also run benchmark for uh, the e-business applications like payroll and uh, you know, and then some business application on based on Oracle. So these are the key eight uh, uh, benchmark wins for Cisco on the M3 rack servers. So the previous generation M2 rack servers were also uh, had the advantage of getting these uh, benchmark winnings as well. Uh, as you see here, about seven of these uh, benchmark results Cisco has won including and, and, and then the lean pack as well. So we have filed quite a bit of patents uh, on this technology associated with uh, integration between switch and the rack server. Uh, there are quite a few, uh, some of them I have just highlighted here and quite a few are also pending in disclosures. Uh, so that's pretty much the presentation I have. Uh, some of the backup slides to give you an idea how the integration is advancing. Okay, sure, please. While doing this benchmarking, is any benchmarking done with respect to TCO per GB per year? Um, some of the benchmarks, uh, I'll have to go back to the slides here, sir. Uh, In fact, one other benchmark probably I want to highlight is uh, Cisco published two new world records in a number of the one socket performance uh, on the price per performance record for TPC benchmark. Is that the one you had the question, sir? Or? As a user, uh -huh. right? As a customer of Cisco, one benchmark which I need is what is my total cost of ownership per GB per year? I think that's a benchmark which uh, uh, most important as a yeah. commercial. Okay. What you've given is essentially an engineering milestone based scenario. That's right. What we would love to see is two things. One is a fundamental economic value proposition mm -hmm. which will make sense because okay. the cloud ecosystem is still evolving. Mm -hmm. It's not even clear where the racks will actually go. Will they go into a telco-based telco -based data center story or will there be any other alternative customer scenario that you have in mind? Mm -hmm. Because that's when we can actually uh, understand it contextually in, a, in an emerging ecosystem because it's still evolving. Okay. If you could give that big picture, it will be very helpful. Okay. Um, as I said, I'm from the engineering side. More of uh, data I have is in the engineering space. 
can I put a supplementary to the original question? Okay. So that you can answer it together. You have presented fairly uh, complex technical matter well. For that, I compliment you. What I would also like to know in the larger picture, how much of this work has happened in India and how much of this work has happened outside? Okay. Whether from Indian ecosystem, there has been a contribution in this exercise. Okay. I mean, I could answer your question very well, uh, but on the ecosystem that questions you had, uh, probably I'll have to consult some of our marketing people to get more data on that one, how well it balances the ecosystem in terms of total cost of ownership. But one, some of the points I have captured here in the very early slides is uh, reduced total cost of ownership. Uh, okay, maybe. So that's basically what I'm trying to say is with extended memory, you could, instead of buying two, three servers, you could buy one server with extended memory. Uh, You've got so instead of investing on uh, multiple servers for that much of amount of memory, you could buy one low-end rack server with extended memory and uh, at the same wire speed, you could get uh, the same extension to that. Plus, that added to that one, uh, it's highly scalable from that standpoint. Uh, so blades you could expand buying blades but once you get to the end of the blade all of them populated either you buy new blade chassis which could be very expensive or you could add just one of the rack server inexpensive rack server node and then extend your uh, compute uh, can requirements. You, can you give us a real world example you've given us the use cases how it's actually helping people and how it's making life easier uh, a less technical example you had a few use cases up there can you actually give us one real-world example how it's benefited? For example, we've got the virtualization um, with the extended memory. What would that enable us to do in real-world terms? Okay. Um, one of the okay, one of the interesting application that uh, um, a customer for Cisco ran his entire enterprise application on one of the server which gave extended memory. Um, up to about 384 gig. This is from the previous generation. So now entire enterprise application was running out of the primary memory. So there was no IO operation going in and that gave them a, a significant uh, boost in their performance. So that uh, technology helped them uh, to establish running their enterprise class application on the primary memory itself. So reducing the IO operations and um, that's one of the examples. Uh, in, in terms of uh, virtualization, um, as I could, this is for any enterprise and uh, telco, we will come out with telco products too, uh, pretty soon NEBS box which will be uh, for telco industry. Exactly, right, 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 right. That's the, that's the point I mean. And just maybe as last question, going back to uh, the question, this is a global uh, okay. development, uh, not typically in India. Okay, I, I wanted to come to that question uh, with this slide here. So what has been developed uh, out of India here is the entire software infrastructure for almost all of these products. The hardware has come from uh, US and China. Uh, we have worked very closely with our hardware design team in US uh, and then also working with ODM models in uh, China uh, to bring out this hardware. So the software P team gets engaged with the hardware right from blade power on or board bring up up to the, uh, you know, the first customer shipment. So the software stack here includes uh, things like you are on a rack server, for example, a BIOS, uh, an embedded uh, CIMC, what we call a uh, baseboard management controller, giving you management functions uh, in standby as well as host power on. Uh, so some of these capabilities, as uh, it alludes to here, uh, this, this is one of the component called CIMC, which is the standalone uh, uh, management engine, server management engine. And on the host side, you have Intel architecture, which is monitored by the CIMC. So the CIMC basically gives you uh, management capabilities in standby 
uh, from remote operation. So most of these uh, software development has happened here, including, as I said, BIOS, BMC, what do we call, and also a lot of utilities uh, for uh, standalone deployments. So coming to a little bit on the uh, UCSM side of it, which is the embedded software that sits on one of the Cisco switch here, uh, Fabric Interconnect. Uh, this UCSM software has completely been uh, developed, initiated from US to start with, but a lot of activities has come out from India teams here. So we have about, I have about 33 member team developing software for rack servers, and there's another 30, 40 member team developing uh, the UCSM software, uh, which is GUI based for your service profile, setting up service profiles, and then it will basically create virtual nodes for you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.